Oh, thank you. Um, so yeah, <clears throat> I'm Marek Belsky, and this is lessons from 25 plus game jams with Godot. Um, so just quick background, I am the cliche of the software engineer turned game developer, but I have been jamming pretty regularly since 2022, and I'm also the author of a suite of plugins in the Godot asset library. Um, so this is going to be coming from my personal perspective of jamming. Uh, I've done like one Ludum Dare, uh, a few other jams, but primarily I've been doing the Godot Wild Jam. And that is a monthly jam. Uh, it starts like many others with a theme, but they also include these three wild cards, which are like optional mechanics. And they're just there kind of to offer some extra inspiration. Um, and it usually lasts for about nine days. So even if you're working full time, you should get two weekends to be able to like contribute to your, your project. Um, yeah, but even if this format doesn't work for you, there's hundreds and hundreds of jams out on edge. So if you have any free time, I recommend just finding a format that works for you. So then the big question is why jam? Especially why jam 30 times? <laughs> um, and so I come from a background of actually being very critical of jams. My mindset was why would you waste time making bad games when you could be working on your good one? I was a perfectionist, and so I would start numerous projects and never finish them because I, they never lived up to the expectations that I had for them. And so I was trapped in that little bubble and just had to learn that as special and unique of a snowflake as I am, I'm not the kind that makes a perfect game on my first try. In fact, I would say even the first 30 leave a lot to be desired, but I still made them, which is more than I can say about like 97% of the ideas that I had before I started jamming. So the deadlines really did help me. The, it was a forcing function against my own perfectionism. Um, and at this point, I, I can proudly say I'm pretty good at being shitty. Like, it's, <laughs> it's liberating to just be able to throw stuff out there. Also, you get to be involved in like, the community and learn to work with the kinds of roles that you would professionally too. Uh, so now some tips I have for like, trying to get the most out of your jam experience in the order that I think you'd probably run into things. The first one is often forming a team. Uh, and I have jammed solo uh, almost a dozen times, but I do think that is an experience pretty exclusive to developers. So I'm going to kind of cover the broader experience of forming a team or being on a team. And I also think it is a lot easier to actually recruit people than it is to be recruited. Um, it is actually super easy for your first jam to find like tons of first timers. Uh, but I don't actually recommend that. I think a, a, a healthy size is about one through five. Um, kind of broken it down by role there. I don't think you need a producer for your jam game. <laughs> if you really want an idea guy who's going to boss you around and like take credit for your work, pick me. Um, <laughs> otherwise, 15 minutes a day, and I think you should be able to do that work yourself. Um, some questions that I think are helpful for vetting people, because this is the internet after all. Um, I, especially that middle one of what do they want to accomplish in this jam, I think is important to ask. It establishes like at least some personal connection with that individual, but also you can vet for some people that are like, maybe have an idea that they're going to try and push on the team before the theme has in, even been announced, or uh, some people who might expect to get first place on their first try kind of thing. Um, also, if you ask about their work or class schedule, I think that's very helpful for scoping, but it also gives you a hint as to their skill level, if they're a student or if they're a professional. Um, and lastly, easy come, easy go. So some of the most enthusiastic people I've had to join a team were the first to disappear when things got tough. So that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, so yeah, the first mistake that every team seems to make is they overscope. Not a big deal. I've overscoped every single game I've worked on and still submitted the most overscoped ones. I think the trick is you really ha just have to rescope regularly. And that is kind of the process of looking at the progress you've made up to that point and trying to make a realistic projection of where that gets you in the time you have left. Like treat every day as a new starting point to that deadline. Um, and also, it takes some discipline, but you should try to prevent scope creep. Um, I was on a jam with a first-time lead and first-time jammer trying to help him like, scope down for the second time. And within minutes of us completing that process, he was like, oh, now that we cut all these features for time, we have time for all these features. I was like, no, that's the whole point of what we just did. It's like, oh, I'm scope creeping again, sorry. So yeah, just something you need to have some discipline around. Um, but definitely, I think 
like rescoping regularly is going to be very important because things are going to change and you're going to have to adapt. Um, big things and small things will happen, like especially for me as a developer, um, sometimes a feature is just taking me longer than I had projected that it should. I will often just drop that feature and move on to the next thing. Um, also, you'll have team members that disappear, as I mentioned. Uh, my first jam, I started, I think, with seven people, got eight uh, midway through, ended up with four at the very end. So that will happen, but we cut the scope a bunch and still made something. Uh, also, actual skill sets sometimes don't match with your expectations. Uh, so I think it was about, about my fifth jam. I had seen some personalities in the, in the Discord chat that were like, oh, I'm not a coder. I write poetry for computers. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be with that kind of engineer on their team. So I found one who was like, oh, I've been a professional for 10 years, um, but I'm not that good. I was like, an engineer with some humility around here? He's going to be great. And I scoped for him being great. And I should have believed him. Um, <laughs> dude was super nice and super enthusiastic. But he was also being very honest, and I mistook that for modesty. So once I recognized my mistake, we rescoped and we were able to make a project that he was able to contribute to. General rule I've learned is to just make the game super easy, if, uh, especially for jams. Um, if the player makes it to the end of your game, they're going to think they had more fun and they will rate you higher. Uh, especially if you can break it up into levels, I generally try to make that first level just hand the victory condition to the player um, before adding any obstacles or any kind of like extra mechanics in their way. Along the lines of keeping it easy, I say build for web. Um, you're going to get way more people looking at your game and, and playing it. And I think that's kind of more important than sometimes using some really cool tech like middleware or C Sharp. Um, so C Sharp might be coming soon from what I hear. And now to probably the hardest thing to talk about is motivation and how to manage it. And this is hard because motivation is abstract. There's not even really one emotion that is motivating. It's sometimes a huge mix. So at least for jams, like I try to split it up into two categories. For me, it's the motivation spring and the engine. And the spring is kind of the motivation that I get from thinking of the idea itself. And oh, it could also be com uh, coming from a muse but it has the qualities of being kind of outside of my control. It feels limitless until it suddenly dries up. Whereas the engine is a manufactured kind of source of motivation. It requires me feeding it fuel, but it's more likely to kind of get me to the end. Um, and it's more reliable, I find. However, it is an engine, so it has some inertia. But the um, point I was going to make is that like the fuel for me that I, that I give that engine is often the emotional reward of actually making progress. So it's that feeling of being in it and like I'm hitting stops towards my destination. And that I find really helpful. But yeah, as I said, it, it has inertia. So it does take some building up of, of momentum. And so the thing I've learned to do that best is to gamify my game production. Um, I try to divide up the tasks to be as small as possible. And I concentrate the easiest ones at the beginning. Uh, that way, it's like the easiest levels of the game. I start getting some momentum, and that actually helps that engine give me the motivation to carry me through some of the larger and longer tasks. And then I yeah, remember to distribute some like easy wins along the way just to keep that engine going in case it loses momentum. And yeah, it's actually, I think the motivation spring has only lasted me through three jams, and it's been like the engine that's gotten me through about 27. Lastly, uh, when you get to the end, you're going to want to get ratings and reviews. I recommend having an icon that pops out. So if you scroll through the list of submissions, you should be able to see yours kind of pretty obviously. Um, and also rate and review other people's games, uh, especially towards the like, early part of submission period. Um, I would recommend sorting people by karma, because those are the people that are rating and reviewing games the most. Um, and rate and review theirs, write feedback they are the most likely ones to return the favor. They might not be the best games, but at least you, know, you will get some kind of feedback from them if, if you're lacking on that. And yeah, that's all the time I have. Again, I'm Marek Belsky. I'm Mac on uh, itch.io and Discord. I'll also do a quick plug for my template. I've been uh, incrementally improving it over 25 jams and uh, hoping to have a 1.0 release uh, later this month. You can find it by searching for MAAA in the Godot Asset Library.
Thank you.